broadcasting live. It's America's longest running talk show on computers. It's Computer America, bringing you the biggest names in technology with guest interviews, new products, and your emails. Listen live at ComputerAmerica.com on any device around the world. Email the show at live at ComputerAmerica.com or find us on social media. Be sure to check out our website for contests, giveaways, show notes, live video stream, podcasts, and more. You're listening to Computer America. Hello and welcome everyone into the Computer America Show. We are the nation's longest running nationally syndicated radio talk show on computers and technology. Everyone, hey, welcome into the program. So today on the show, we are going to be talking about uh, Arculus and this is part of our CES 2022 coverage. And I'm really excited about this because, you know, uh, I was just reading a story today about a, um, a supposed NFT heist. I mean, uh, how this person, how this individual had millions of dollars worth of NFTs uh, in a wallet that was continuing connected to the internet man uh, that seems a little uh, foolhardy but you know we see stories like that all the time where security and cryptocurrency you would think a technology that is inherently decentralized supposedly secure in so many ways and yet I guess it, it may be just a little bit complicated because so many people seem to fall uh, victim to phishing attacks, um, you know, other ransomware, th- tons of different things. So joining us today is a way to actually protect a cryptocurrency wallet in cold storage. And don't worry if uh, if you're concerned about not knowing any of the terminology. Uh, we have the perfect guest, Dr. Adam Lowe, here to discuss all of this and to, of course, yeah, spell it out for us. So I'm really excited about this. And why don't we go ahead, introduce him, bring him on. Everyone, welcome onto the program. As I said before, Dr. Adam Lowe. He is the Chief Innovation Officer of Compo Secure, and of course, uh, you know he is representing Arculus. So, uh, Doctor, welcome on to the show. How are you doing? Yeah, happy to have you here. And uh, yeah, so everyone out there watching the video portion, we highly recommend it for this one. Uh, uh, you set up a great little demonstration, but of course, there's also the website getsarculus, A R C U L U S dot com. We'll have a link to that in the show notes over at our website. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to kind of the demonstration. Let's, uh, I guess, let's start with basics. Give us a bit about uh, Arculus, you know, kind of where, uh, when was it founded, and uh, talk about, I guess, kind of cryptocurrency wallets for those who are a little unfamiliar about the whole concept of why you need a wallet. Sure. So I'll, I'll start with our parent. So our parent company, Compo Secure, has been making banking cards and ID cards for various federal governments for the last 20 years. Uh, we make banking cards for some of the largest banks in the world, JP Morgan, American Express, uh, Curve, et cetera. So, you know, we're really proud of our heritage. So we started working on Arculus about 24 months ago. You know, if we handle private keys for banks, we can handle private keys for cryptocurrency and have a, like I said, long history of, of doing ID and security. So we took all of that. We said, you know, there's a problem in the cryptocurrency space, right? You have a lot of people who, as you mentioned, keep their um, private keys kind of in the cloud. And that's very hackable if your individual account gets compromised. Or some people keep them offline in what are often used as hardware wallets, which is what Arculus is. But the kind of first generation of those are extremely difficult to use, and most people can't really understand them. So we like to say the the mission of Arculus is to be safe, simple, and secure so that anyone can use a hardware wallet. Safe, simple, and secure. It, it sounds, uh, you know, it, it sounds easy, but at the same time, we often say that kind of ease of use is the antithesis to uh, secure. Like it's very hard to kind of blend the two because if it's easy for you to use, it hey, it may be easy for someone else to log into and kind of do that thing. But you have a pretty innovative thing. I think a lot of our listeners are familiar with uh, two-factor authentication when they send a code to your phone or an app or something like that. Uh, you use something a little bit different with three factor uh, is, is that kind of like the thing where you know they put buttons that are so far away that you can't use your arms and you need two people to kind of sign into this account or what is three factor no not quite so uh, we actually think our three factor is is very easy to use so it's something you have which is your arculus card so for your listeners out there you're going to get a card that's the same exact size as a credit card and inside is a secure banking chip it's called secure element and that keeps your private keys for your crypto safe So it's completely offline, right? There's no Bluetooth, there's no wires, there's no buttons, there's no batteries. 
um, and that generates and keeps your private keys safe. So that's one of the factors. It's also something you know, so you're going to have a PIN and something you are, which is your biometric. So you have these three independent security factors that are easy to use. So you'll see it in the demo in a minute, but what we'll do is, um, you know, I have the app open. I use my biometric to open the app. Then if we go to send some crypto, it's going to ask for a PIN. So that's something that you know, right? We enter our PIN and then you need something that you have. We tap our Arculus card, communicates over secure NFC, signs the transaction, and you can send your crypto. And I think one of the more uh, interesting things that we have here is the physical aspect. Uh, I'm sorry, the physical aspect of this, where this obviously comes from your heritage with you know dealing with uh, physical credit cards. But how um, how important was it to have something physical in your opinion? Because I guess there's going to be a lot of other technology. I know that we haven't gotten to it yet, but things like tap to pay and you know I think what people are used to with credit cards. Uh, how innovative was it for you to bring a physical card to this whole system? Yeah, so Arculus uses the same NFC technology that's that's in tap to pay So the nice thing is it's a, there's a secure, robust ecosystem around it. Um, and I think it is very important to have some physical aspect of security uh, to keep your private keys safe. I mean, anytime something is in the cloud, you know, at the end of the day, there are a lot of skilled hackers out there and they can get to it. Um, even if you have keys secured you know, on your mobile device, that can be problematic as well if people are able to access that, um, even indirectly through phishing means, like you, you said, you know, that's a problem. By having your keys on this offline passive device, uh, we think that that is a, a robust and much more secure way to keep your private keys and keep your crypto safe. So as we like to say, your keys, your crypto. No, and and it, it sounds um, you know very very convenient to use because it's something that you have you remember and, and everything that you just outlined. But of course, getting access to the account is one part. Um, people have, I think, a lot of options when it comes to wallet and you know when it comes to cryptocurrency or uh, just any kind of wallet. Uh, Ease of use, good user interface. If you are going to introduce this to people who maybe for the first time are going to be getting into cryptocurrency, have you built out your system to kind of facilitate, you know, old users who want to bring things in and new users who maybe want to get into for the first time? Sure. So if you keep your crypto on a centralized exchange, you know, they are the custodians of your keys. So you've actually never touched your own keys if that's the only place you have your crypto. So you could very easily uh, send crypto over the chain. So let's say I have Bitcoin at one of the big centralized exchanges. You know, I could uh, hit receive on my Bitcoin, bring up my Bitcoin address, and then just send it from the centralized exchange over to Arculus. That's very easy. Uh, if you have your own other either hardware wallet or software wallet uh, where you do manage your keys, uh, there is essentially a, an import function into Arculus. You can take your 12-word seed phrase, import that, your private keys will be generated from that and all of your crypto will show up. And, and hey, that sounds uh, very, very simple. But I guess part of this is, of course, uh, and I've actually seen this with other companies that try to do crypto wallets. It's like, they, you know, they store it on their secure cloud. They're going to manage your keys, like you just said, uh, with the central exchanges. But even third party companies want to, you know, take some of the numbers and scary stuff out of it for people. But privacy is, of course, a big thing. And I'm wondering if you as a company, do you monitor transactions to kind of say, oh, you know, that something doesn't look right? Or do you monitor, uh, you know, kind of who's accessing from where? Like, how much are you really kind of keeping tabs on the accounts that are, you know, created with Arculus? Yeah, you know, so it's really important. You know, privacy is very important in this community and it's very important to us as a company. So when we send you Arculus, uh, it's essentially ready to create your wallet, ready to create your keys, but it hasn't done so yet. And it doesn't do it until it gets to you. And what's also important is we can't link, you know, wallet A with person A. So, you know, when you create your wallet, you create your addresses and the system does all of that for you. You know, we're not tracking that and we physically can't track that by design. So, you know, we see traffic over the system, um, you know, for buy swap. Because uh, within Arculus, you can also buy crypto. So you can go, you can give US dollars to a partner, purchase crypto, or you can easily flip crypto, say Bitcoin to Ethereum. So because we have network partners, we can see that happening, but we have no idea who it is. And for basic sending and receiving, we, we don't mm -hmm. see that traffic at all. So all our users get essentially complete privacy. 
that and hey that's just what you want to hear uh now part of what and i saw this more with like uh, let's take Robinhood for instance they were having some problems with uh transacting and freezing and um you know kind of slow transaction speeds and and uh fees as well i wanted to get uh kind of get to uh, you know, is everything kind of fast and uh, fees low and all that kind of thing that people kind of expect from a cryptocurrency exchange and wallet? Uh, yes, you know, we do our best to to do our best to provide fee efficient um, uh, fee efficient platform. So if you were to send or receive crypto, we don't charge any fees for that. So if, if you send Bitcoin to another wallet, receive Bitcoin from another wallet, uh, you'll need to pay the network fee, which you know we have no control over and is, is kind of guided by the conditions of the network. You know, Ethereum's been kind of slow and clogged for a while now and, and has high gas fees, but no one can really control that uh, until the Ethereum 2.0 upgrade finally comes through. Um, gotcha. You know, there is some fees if you purchase crypto or go crypto to crypto, uh, but we make that as fee efficient as we can for our customers. Understood. And I think now, because this is going to be a very condensed interview, um, I think now would be a good time, if you'd like, to kind of go through the demonstration and show people how uh, how it actually looks in use. Sure. So this is the home screen for Arculus. Uh, for time's sake, I went ahead and opened it up. So I used my biometric, as I mentioned, to open this. Here you can see a lot of uh, ERC-20 tokens, as well as you know some of the main currencies in the space, you know, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash, XRP, whole bunch of the um, highest demand ERC-20 tokens. So for a demo, if I scroll down here, uh, especially because it's very fast, we'll use XRP. So let's say I want to see my XRP, I just tap it. Uh, here you can see I do a lot of demos. <laughs> uh, if I want to receive some XRP, I can just tap receive. There's my public address. Anyone in the world with an XRP wallet can send XRP. Uh, here, if I wanted to go ahead and send some XRP, I could grab a previous transaction. You can see there's the address I sent to and the hash ID. Mm -hmm. If I wanted to repeat that transaction, just hit repeat transaction, brings this up, very convenient. Let's say I wanted to send a dollar of XRP. Go ahead and hit send. Now it's gonna ask me for my pin. Finally, it's gonna ask me for my Arculus card, which I'm gonna tap. It's gonna communicate over secure That's NFC. That's awesome. It's already, already done. We sign the hash and we're done. So compared to other hardware wallets out there, I always joke, I will gladly race people. And <laughs> while they're still getting going, I'll be done. So, and you know, that was very fast. And uh, let's see, I wasn't looking at the clock, but that was about under a minute. And of course, that's you explaining it and kind of going slow. I'm sure once you kind of get in the flow of it, you could get done in seconds. Uh, how secure would you say that is compared to a lot of other solutions? Like in terms of everything you just did, it was fairly simple. Uh, how, I, I won't say impenetrable, but how hard would it be to have someone else try to do that without all the information in your head? Sure. So I would say it'd be extremely difficult. You know, the example I would give is, you know, if, uh, if I close this app, right. Um, mm -hmm. and I could literally hand you this iPhone and this card and right you couldn't do anything with it. You don't have my, my bi bi biometric to access the app and you don't know the pin for the card. And if you started, if you somehow got my biometric and then started guessing the pin uh, after three incorrect attempts, it's going to lock the card. So it would be extremely difficult, I think, for someone to penetrate the system. Understood. Um, this, uh, and of course, providing, uh, you know, providing something like this card and of course this app, uh, you're going to have to do some customer support, I guess, every once in a while. Uh, are there kind of safe, you know, safety measures in place to kind of keep someone from going, Hey, I am totally, uh, you know, I'm totally Adam and I totally need my pin. Uh, could you let me into my account? Like how does customer support work with something that is fairly secure, you know, on the customer end? Sure. So we do have measures for that. Uh, we do have great customer support uh, through our ticket system. So on getarculus.com, there's a support section. We're very rapid response to our customers. So we actually, in that specific scenario, you know, we don't know your PIN. So there's no way we could provide it to you. What we would tell you is go ahead and restore your card. You should have a 12-word seed phrase when you create the wallet. So you could go ahead and restore and reset your PIN. So that's kind of a self-service thing. And it mm -hmm. keeps us from trying to be in that weird situation of determining you are you. You know, really, we're giving you this great hardware wallet where you can control your destiny with your crypto. Yeah, no, and it sounds like it's doing it very, very well. Uh, I see here on your site uh, that you have, of course, for individuals, but this is also for businesses. What application would this have in a business setting? 
Sure. So in a business setting, you know, we have a variety of um, exchange customers already, certainly a lot of banking customers. You know, Arculus at the end of the day is, is not just crypto. Crypto is a great application for the security that, you know, the Arculus hardware device provides, but it really is a digital asset and digital identity platform. So for B2B partners, we could do passwordless and secure login through something called the FIDO2 standard. So imagine you're going into your banking app. You could literally tap the card to the back of the phone and passwordlessly log into your banking app um, if, if one of our partner banks were uh, choose, choosing to enable that. Uh, additionally, you know, we could certainly white label this Arculus technology for a major fintech. Um, you know, we're in discussions with people, so I don't want to name names, but you okay. can imagine instead of saying Arculus on the front, you know, major fintech and, and it would be doing the same technology on on their platform. Makes perfect sense. I and, and I could definitely imagine um, some of the partners that would be uh, very interested in a similar card like um, you know kind of system. So I wanted to uh, kind of wrap this up with a little bit of blue skying because cryptocurrency. I think people who are invested and into cryptocurrency are really into cryptocurrency, and everyone else they're kind of you know they hear about it in the news every once in a while. Um, you know they may see it on some of their different applications. They may hear other people talking about. It, but I wanted to, um, you know, obviously for Arculus and for you, what do you think is uh, kind of the future for, for cryptocurrency? Is it a technology that eventually everyone will embrace or is it a technology that will be embraced once it's simple to use? Like, what do you think are the holdups and what is the future of cryptocurrency? Sure. So uh, a few things on that. So one, you know, blockchain in general, I think is going to be used really well, um, you know, the, especially in supply chain and, and some other places it's already being used. Uh, for cryptocurrency and, and for consumers, I do think it's going to continue to grow. You know, the ease and speed which which you can push value all around the road, world, cross borders, you know, from remittance or, or other uses is just fantastic. So for that alone, I think cryptocurrency is, is here to stay. You know, a lot of the assets are non-inflationary. Right? People love that. You know, it's, it's quote unquote, the new gold. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's absolutely here to say what's really going to enable mass adoption by consumers is two things. One you hit on, which is, is ease of use and security. And the second is clear regulatory guidelines from the federal government here and abroad. So I think those are the two big holdups. Yeah. And uh, good luck with that regulatory one, because we're seeing some happen every now and again. But, uh, you know, it seems like there's a lot of hesitation to not overregulate it. But there's also, you know, a, an urgency, too, because it is getting adopted faster and faster. So I think with that, because this is a shorter interview, uh, everyone, Dr. Adam Lowe, he is, of course, with Arculus. And uh, and hey, I, and I want to thank you so much for coming on the show and kind of explaining that for us. It's a very cool card. And everyone out there who's been watching the video, you you can, of course, see the example. But if you'd like to see it yourself, there's a demo video uh, over at getsarculus.com. We'll have a link to that in the show notes. So, Adam, I want to thank you so much for coming on. And uh, yeah, I think we can go ahead and wrap that up there unless there's anything we didn't touch on. Nope, I really appreciate the time. And I think we got a great overview of the product. Perfect. All right, everyone. Uh, once again, computeramerica.com. Everything will be there. And hey, thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you.